Hello friends, welcome to C programming video tutorial series. In the previous video tutorials, we understood that data type indicates the type of data can be stored in a variable or a constant. At present, you remember that variable means a memory location, a constant means a memory location. In upcoming video tutorials, we are going to discuss variables and constants in detail. Variable is a named memory location whose value changes during the execution of a program. Whereas constant is a named memory location whose value never changes during the execution of a program. At present, you just remember that variable and constant means a memory location. Okay. Data type indicates the amount of memory to be allocated for specific type of data. Data type indicates the possible range of values can be stored in a specific type of a variable or a constant. Data type also indicates the type of operations can be performed on a specific type of data. There are five primitive or basic data types are available in C. They are int, float, double, char and void. As I told, data type indicates the type of data. Int indicates integer type of data that is whole numbers, numbers without decimal point. Float and double indicate real type of data that is fractional numbers, numbers with decimal point. Char indicates character type of data that is a single symbol enclosed in single quotations. Void indicates nothing, no value, no data. Data type also indicates the amount of memory to be allocated for specific type of data that is for integer type of data system allocates 2 bytes of memory location or 4 bytes of memory location that depends upon the system word size or the compiler. For float type of data system allocates 4 bytes of memory location. For double type of data, system allocates 8 bytes of memory location. For character type of data, system allocates 1 byte memory location. Depending upon the size, the range of values also differs. An integer memory location which is of 2 bytes can have a value or can hold a value from minus 32768 to plus 32767. An integer memory location which is of 4 bytes can hold value from minus 21474836482 to plus 21474836647. That is the range. You can see the range differs depending upon the size also. The float range is 1.2e minus 38 to 3.4e plus 38 with uh, 6 precisions. Double range is 23 e minus 308 to 1.7 e plus 308 with 15 precisions and the character range is minus 128 to plus 127 and also data type indicates the type of operations can be performed on specific type of data we know that we can convert characters inside the strings from uppercase to lowercase we cannot convert a number to an uppercase or lowercase right i cannot say that uh, 3 uppercase 3 lowercase right so we cannot perform those operations. Uppercase and lowercase operations are invalid on number type of data whereas those operations are valid on strings. We cannot multiply two strings. We cannot divide two strings. So division and multiplication are invalid operations on strings whereas they are valid on numbers. So data type indicates four things. Data type indicates type of data, amount of memory to be allocated, the possible range of values can be stored and the type of operations can be performed. In this video tutorial, I would like to discuss C data type modifiers. As the name itself indicating, data type modifiers modify. Data type modifiers are used to modify the properties of primitive or basic data types, except float and void data types. Data type modifiers are used to modify the properties of primitive or basic data types according to application requirements so that we can be able to precisely utilize the computer memory and CPU. What are those properties? With the help of data type modifiers, we can modify the size of primitive data types. We can modify the sign of primitive data types. With the help of data type modifiers, we can modify the size that is the amount of memory to be allocated for specific type of data. We can modify the sign. We can restrict whether only positive values can be stored or both positive and negative values can be stored in a specific type of memory location. 
there are four data type modifiers short long signed and unsigned short and long modifiers are used to modify the size of primitive types signed and unsigned modifiers are used to modify the sign of primitive types short and long are used to decrease or increase the size of primitive data types signed and unsigned are used to restrict the sign whether only positive values can be able to store or both positive and negative values can be stored in a specific type of memory location so i hope you guys have understood why data type modifiers and what are the different modifiers we have if you modify the size or sign of primitive data types then the possible range of values can be stored also changes if you modify the size or sign of primitive data types then the possible range of values can be stored also changes signed is the default modifier for any data type you can see here int float double char they can store negative as well as positive values any data type which allows to store positive as well as negative values then it is considered as signed data type here int is a signed int float is a signed float double is a signed double char is a signed char all of them allow you to create memory locations which can be able to store negative as well as positive values we can also able to create memory locations which can hold only positive values they will not allow you to store the negative values how do we do that with the help of data type modifiers that is we use unsigned keyword with the help of unsigned keyword we can create memory location which can store only positive values which can hold only positive values we can create an unsigned integer memory location which can hold only unsigned unsigned means positive remember that signed means negative as well as positive numbers let's have a scenario and understand where data type modifiers are handy and why they are useful we know that memory is divided into partitions small small partitions and uh, each partition is called as a memory location and every memory location is going to be of uh, one byte just assume that this chunk of memory is one byte memory location one byte means 8 bits remember that one byte means 8 bits in this memory location how many values we can store let me take a calculator i take help of calculator to give you the range of values that we can store in this memory location or in these memory locations 2 raised to the power of 8 bits is equal to 256 in this memory location we can store 256 values if this memory location is a signed memory location that means if it allows to store positive as well as negative values we can store the minimum value minus 128 and the maximum value 127 if it allows us to store only positive values that means this memory location is unsigned memory location then in this memory location we can store the minimum value 0 and the maximum value 255 that means 0 to 255 means 256 values right and this memory location is 2 uh, bytes memory location 2 bytes means 16 bits 8 into 2 is 16 bits how many values we can store in this memory location let me take the calculator again 2 raised to the power of 16 bits is equal to 65536 values we can store in this memory location if this memory location is a signed memory location then the minimum value possible to store is minus -32768 and the maximum value possible to store is plus +32767 if it is an unsigned memory location then the minimum value possible to store is 0 and the maximum value possible to store is 65535 Zero to sixty-five thousand five thirty-five means sixty-five thousand five thirty-six values, right? You can see the range differs depending upon the sign also. And this is a four bytes of memory location. Four bytes means thirty-two bits. How many values possible to store? Let me take again calculator. Clear. Two raised to the power of thirty-two is equal to around forty-two billion plus values. If I divide it by two, it is going to be. 2147483648 that is the minimum value if it is a signed memory location that means uh, we can store the minimum value minus 2 billion and the maximum value is plus 2 billion if it is a unsigned memory location the possible values are the minimum value is 0 maximum value is 4 billion plus value whatever that we have just now seen in the calculator here i have a number 32000 now you should tell me 
in which memory location I should store this so that I can utilize the memory properly. 32,000 is it possible to store in one byte memory location? You can see in one byte memory location we can store the minimum value minus 128 and the maximum value 127 if it is signed memory location. Just assume that all of them are signed memory location. Okay. In this memory location I cannot store 32,000 because this memory location allows us to store maximum value 127. Just assume that you have a barrel and that barrel has the capability of uh, storing 127 liters of water. And what happens if you pour 32,000 liters of water in that barrel? The water will get overflow, right? So if I try to store 32,000 in one byte memory location, I get an error of overflow error. So that is a wrong choice. I cannot store 32,000 in one byte of memory location. Is it possible to store in two bytes? Yes, it is possible to store in two bytes because the maximum value I can store in this two bytes memory location is 32,767. 32,000 is smaller than 32,767. So it is possible to store in two bytes memory location. That means I can store it. Is it possible to store this 32,000 in four bytes memory location? Yes, it is possible there because it is four bytes. If I can be able to store it in two bytes, that means I can be able to store this 32,000 in 4 bytes also. Now I need to decide whether I have to store this 32,000 number in 2 bytes or 4 bytes. What do you say? The best option is in 2 bytes. Do not put that in 4 bytes. Because if I put this 32,000 number in 4 bytes memory location, 2 bytes memory locations are used by the 32,000 number. Uh, remaining 2 bytes is waste. So we are wasting the memory. We are not utilizing the memory properly. Whereas if I store this 32,000 inside two bytes of memory, we are not wasting any memory there. You can see that. So the best option is two bytes of memory location for this number. We know that in our code blocks, the integer is uh, occupying four bytes of memory location, four bytes. We have seen that in the previous uh, video tutorial. Now, if I create a memory location of type integer, then what system does? We know that the system is going to allocate four bytes of memory location. It is going to allocate four bytes of memory location. And if I store this 32,000, if I store this 32,000 in this integer memory location, which is of four bytes, we are wasting two bytes of memory location friends, right? So we are not utilizing the memory properly. As a programmer, it is our responsibility to utilize the memory properly. What I have to do then? I have to create or tell to the system to allocate a memory location which should be of type integer and it should take only two bytes. How do we do that? Is it possible to do that? Yes, it is possible with the help of data type modifiers. I can take help of short data type modifier. A short data type modifier is used to reduce the size of the primitive type. How do we do that now? What I can do is I can create a memory location of type short int. What short int does? It reduces the integer size to half. That means the system is going to allocate only two bytes of memory location friends. And in this two bytes of memory location, I can put 32,000. You can see now I am not wasting any memory. So to store 32,000 value, we have to create a memory location of type short int, not int type. I hope you guys are understanding how the data type modifiers are useful and when we have to decide which type of memory location we have to create. And also you have understood that based on the type of a memory location, if the memory location is signed or unsigned, a possible a range of values is also differs. So it is a programmer's responsibility to decide what type of memory location. With the help of primitive data types and data type modifiers, we can utilize the computer memory properly. We can utilize the CPU properly. In the upcoming video tutorials, we get more information on data type modifiers, friends. I think for this video tutorial, this much is enough. I suggest you people to watch this video again and again, understand everything clearly. For more benefits and be up to date, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And don't forget to like, comment and share these videos with others so that everyone will get benefited. Keep learning, keep coding, keep sharing. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. See you in the next tutorial.